Os cobras So those were those holes. Oh my god. So I guess those were those holes.
Wawa's new Blackberry Cobbler handcrafted beverages are the perfect... In this video, we're going to be talking about making a mage build an Elden Ring at the start of the game, how to get started as a mage, and what are the things you should do in the beginning in order to get off on the right foot. I like to begin the game before you can get as a Elden Ring is not that difficult compared to other Souls games, in my opinion, moped in a way that's mostly mana-based. 8% to the mana side and like 10% to the health side when possible, except in certain scenarios. But that's basically how you want to play so that you always have enough to kill the enemies with spells. One really great thing in Elden Ring 2 is that when you kill difficult enemies or groups of enemies, you replenish a certain amount of flasks. And there are also like scarabs around the landscape that you can kill that replenish flasks. So this gives you even more ways to get that. I already got this glowstone, cobble, and glowstone arc. Resource back without resting so that you always have enough FP in order to cast your spells. Diving into the attributes of a mage, primarily you're going to want intelligence. This is what's going to increase your dip heavily on it. Uh, in my experience, you don't need to go crazy with endurance, you can still do just fine with low endurance. But you probably want to help your stamina casting damage rapidly in order to keep pace with the enemies. Beyond intelligence, the other two attributes you should probably have some points in are vigor in order to take a hit or two. You don't want to go crazy again here because, again, your strategy is to not get hit. But putting a few points here will help you, you know, survive a potential one-shot. All you need to do is survive the one-shot attacks. As long as you have enough health to survive one-shots, you have enough health. And then the other attribute is mind. Mind will allow you to cast more spells before you can chuck pots. It makes your pots go further because every time you use one, if you use it at the end of, you know, let's say you exhaust your whole FP bar, then you're actually gaining more back with those pots. So you definitely want to spend points in mind as well, but you want to lean heavily into intelligence and then have some points in endurance bigger in mind. There's no, like, attunement attribute like there are in the Souls games, if you're familiar with those, that allow you to slot more spells. Instead, your memory slots will increase as you find items throughout the game. So I try not to worry about memory slots and how to increase them. They will increase naturally as you progress the game. Moving on to early mage equipment, probably the biggest thing is getting yourself a better staff early on. Now, there is one that you can get called the Demigod Staff or something like this that's in the Weeping Peninsula. There's a say, like, field boss there, a mini boss. I don't even think it has a health bar that you can kill pretty quickly in that area that will drop you a staff that has much better scaling than the one you begin the game with. 
or you can find the meteorite staff, which is in a runes over at Kaelin. You can check the exact location on the wiki. It's called meteorite staff. That has S scaling, but you can't upgrade it. So it's a really good early game staff that has uh, fantastic scaling in terms of the, the damage that you deal, but not being able to upgrade it, it's gonna be outpaced by other staves throughout the course of the game. But if you're just talking about the very beginning of the game, you might wanna ride over there. You literally don't have to kill anything. You go right into the runes, open a chest, get it. You have an S scaling staff right out the gate. It's fantastic. Besides the staves, you're going to want to get more spells. Obviously, you're a mage. Uh, there is a sorcerer trainer not very far into the game in Limgrave in the Waypoint Ruins. Same place that it was located in the network chest, if you're familiar with that. Uh, sorcerer Selen is going to sell you stuff if you defeat the boss in front of her. Um, there's actually a scroll you can get that's just a little bit south of there also that you can give to her that will increase the uh, the spells that she sells. Very Some very good spells there, so make sure you pick those up if you need more spells. Speaking about the spells themselves, uh, Glintstone Pebble is a spell that you're going to use throughout the course of the game. It's a staple. It's basically like Soul Arrow from the, the Souls games. It has very low cost. It deals decent damage for the cost. It has exceptional range. It tracks the target. One of the things that you're going to find out throughout the course of the game is that a lot of spells, while their damage is incredibly high, have very long cast times, or they cost way too much FP for the damage they deal. So you can actually deal the same amount or more damage with a different spell as long as you cast it a couple of times. And because Glintstone Pebble, for instance, can be cast quite quickly in rapid succession, it, it sometimes outperforms some of the strongest spells in the game. But that brings up another point, which is make sure that you hold down some spells. A lot of spells have like bonus effects if you hold the button down, or they're meant to be channeled by holding the R1 button down. So make sure you do that for a lot of spells as well. I also want to make a mention here for the sort of arch type spells, the ones that put the daggers above your head. There's a couple variations of these. They are not very mana efficient. The damage they deal is substantial in a lot of cases, but they're not very mana efficient. What I would suggest doing, if you like that spell, because it's a very good spell against aggressive enemies, particularly aggressive bosses, is get the Ashes of War cleansed of arch, put that on your you know melee weapon, uh, like a cheap melee weapon or whatever, and when you are fighting an aggressive boss, instead of using the spell, use the Ash of War. It is tremendously effective. The damage is about the same as the spell, as long as you're upgrading the sword. And the cost is a fraction. Like, we're talking like a quarter of that of the spell. So you'll, you'll outperform the actual spell itself with that Ash of War. So make sure you have that Ash of War if you like that spell and use that instead. Those are the mage items you need early on to get off to a good start. There are a lot more good mage items found in Rayo Lucaria Academy, but that's not something you're going to do right out of the gate. So these are the things that are going to get you started on the right path as a mage. Just a couple final tips. Remember that casting costs stamina, even when on horseback. So if you're on horseback and you're flinging away your spells and then you get the situation where you need to boost Torrent to get out of it. Oh, there to get Oh, I don't have enough of it. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Oh, I do. I can't really get that one. Yeah, because these are two different spells, and it's like they, they all have 3,000 besides this one. So I don't care, dude. Oh, it's just the damn card. Yeah, okay, so yeah, this one gives me the sword.
are searching endlessly for jobs, start your career with Apton. We're not looking for experience in past tech.
Thank <laughs> you. 